Okay, so this is probably a good moment uh, to begin. Uh, as I said previously, my name is Filiberto Amati, my partner with uh, Amati and Associates uh, in Warsaw. Uh, and uh, I'm here today to moderate this workshop uh, on the glorification of lifestyles. Uh, what we want to look at, uh, uh, it's not just what new technological products and innovation are coming to the market, but how the technological vector has completely impacted uh, uh, our lives as consumers and as customers, of course, of the automotive industry. So to begin with, uh, let's go back to the 60s. Uh, back then, uh, there was a family ritual of uh, having dinner together while watching TV. This was the beginning of uh, uh, what we call prime time TV. And it is when the TV business model of TV slots were born. Media companies, broadcasters, content producers, and advertisers really liked the notion of TV slot because it was very predictable. They knew exactly, very well, whom was going to be attending uh, and watching each one of their contents at what time uh, and with whom and for how long. This model allowed basically to uh, create uh, content, very specific uh, and tailored content to each slot, to each group of viewers. And the better the content, the more advertisers were interested in the content. And the more advertisers invested in the TV slots, the better the content became. And this is how the business model of television developed uh, throughout the years uh, with a positive cycle of reinforcement. It wasn't only uh, the content uh, though, which was predictable. As a matter of fact, our life as a consumer was based uh, on what we call occasions, which were very specific uh, and very predictable. They had a very clear beginning, a very clear end, and often uh, there was a transition between two occasions, commuting to work and working, or uh, finish working and starting your leisure time at the end of the day. And those transitions were very powerful. As we see in example of Corona, for example, they built their whole franchise around this one transition moment, which was the end of work time with the beginning of leisure time. So switching from one to another. Of course, uh, in the years, they also developed uh, uh, more transitions, uh, more specifically, the one from holiday, sorry, from work to holiday. So, for example, Corona uh, was using this imaginary of people uh, moving, uh, let's say, using the lime in the beer as a way of uh, switching from work to relax. Uh, but beyond that, uh, uh, and this model worked until the 90s, more or less, unchallenged. But in the 90s, it was a bit of an earthquake. That's what Negroponte, the MIT professor who was managing the MIT Digital Lab, called the convergence of technologies. When telecom, media production, media content moved towards the digital, then uh, the when and the where and the predictability uh, started to be shaken. For example, uh, we have the case of portable DVDs. We have the case, probably some of you remember, TiVo, uh, which could uh, allow you to record without advertising digitally record without advertising content, and then broadcast it uh, later on at your, uh, um, let's say, when it was most convenient for you as a viewer. 
But it wasn't uh, until uh, uh, the launch of the iPhone where uh, uh, that business model of TV and that marketing model of consumption occasion was completely disrupted because the iPhone gave uh, a tipping point to the smartification of devices, the smartification of appliances, which is why we now talk about connected cars, connected TVs, connected oven, connected fridges. And we live in a world you know, which we normally refer to as Internet of Things, but we live in a world where we could be connecting and doing multiple things remotely through the cloud, through data connection. And the iPhone was uh, the beginning of this uh, revolution, basically. And this revolution, uh, which was a technological revolution, actually has uh, a, a bigger meaning for us uh, in the sense that uh, it created a cultural and a social change uh, in the sense that uh, we now live in a world where we can seamlessly switch wherever we want, whenever we want, uh, from one occasion to another. And we call the blur uh, that phenomenon whereby occasions start blurring and overlapping with each other uh, and to the point that we can't even recognize them any longer. The most common example of blur is in work and in particular in the work play or work leisure spectrum. As we said before, we used to have specific transitions from one to the other. Right now, because of technology, we can switch them back and forth from one to the other, whenever we want, wherever we want, regardless of where we are geographically located. So we could be in a resort by a pool and actually be playing, uh, be working on Slack with our project team remotely halfway around the world. Uh, we say that this is a, a technology driven, but it's actually a social and cultural meta trend because it's not only about technology. And the best example of that is probably on how the blur is reshaping the design of our offices, uh, regardless uh, of the technologies inside. So we're moving from offices which were uh, clearly designed for efficiency uh, for productivity to offices where playing, gaming, relaxing, uh, eating, uh, staying 24 by 7, cocooning yourself, uh, socializing are all acceptable activities. And they will become more and more a staple of the office of the future. At the same time, uh, Technology allows us for working from home in a seamless way. You know, we have seen this accelerated by the pandemic and we've seen how uh, this phenomenon allows us to, you know, uh, basically be anywhere. And we moved from the traditional notion of home as a sanctuary to the idea of home as a new office. Who hasn't been on holiday and hasn't uh, sneaked out and paused the holiday to have a quick Zoom call or not? One of the effects of the blur is really uh, technology enabled, but the change it's again in our behavior as a consumers, in what we do, in how we, what is socially acceptable and socially not acceptable any longer. It's not only the future of work which, has, uh, uh, which needs to deal uh, uh, with it, but the future of work has one key aspect, which is the emergence of digital nomads, 
which is probably the quintessential example of people who were completely reject the notion of a stationary office or a stationary home to travel around the world, probably pre-pandemic, and work remotely. Uh, and for as long as they do their work and they are productive, really nobody cares where these people are based. So these are the guys and the girls who work out of a Starbucks, in a cafeteria, by a pool on the slopes, and they're really independently and freely accepting this nomadic uh, lifestyle. But as we said, uh, it's not only the future of work which is impacted. Urban resorts are emerging to gather to customers who are at the same time business travelers and leisure seekers. Okay, a lot of business travelers actually travel with family and attach now a leisure activity to the, their staying uh, for business. In Europe, uh, Ropo was a big trend before the pandemic. Research online, purchase offline. This is really an hybridization of retail trend, which is an effect of the blur. The fact that, you know, while we think of technologies as being, you know, people are moving to purchasing online. Actually, that's not necessarily true uh, it for all categories at every point in time. But probably mo the most interesting is the Asian luxury market for high net worth individuals, for, for example, for timepieces and jewelry beyond $25,000. Because there is uh, a higher probability that any of those items are negotiated and sold through a WeChat or Snapchat messaging between the customer and the seller, and they are delivered on a tarmac of a private plane or on the lobby of an hotel uh, rather than in store. And you can imagine the impact that that has on commercial real estate. Finally, in the automotive context, uh, we need to understand what's the difference between technological innovation and blur. For example, there is a number of emerging technologies which take care of our safety in the road and uh, recognize our facial expressions and our behavior in the car uh, and even take over the driving of the car or the stopping of the car, the braking of the car, when they realize that we are not fit for driving in a very specific moment. This is for me an example of technological innovation that has nothing to do with the blur. Uh, it's really about uh, security and you know uh, safety on the roads, but it's not really about uh, blurring boundaries. Whereas uh, a more compelling example for the blur is the emergence of uh, uh, automatic self-driving, uh, fully automatic self-driving vehicles, which are also able to do a diagnostic uh, for your health. So while you are commuting from the airport to the office or from the office to your hotel, you could actually, due throughout the drive, uh, receive a quick diagnostic or connect with your doctor uh, depending on whether uh, you have uh, any specific needs or not, or you feel ill or tired. From an automotive point of view, we really need to switch from the either-or mentality of you know, business versus leisure, uh, men uh, with a performance-driven attitude to women with a shopping-driven attitude, uh, to the, an end-end mentality. Of course, when we look at the design of a car, the design of a car immediately positions the car in a specific category, sport, van, family, utility, and so on and so forth. But we need to look beyond that. We need to look at the fact, and we need to come to a conclusion, that when we look inside the car and what really happens inside the car, our customers are switching back and forth from play 
to uh, uh, work all the time. The, the, consum the traditional consumption occasions that we imagine for that car are actually not predictable any longer. So whether it's on the workplace spectrum, whether it's commuting, traveling, uh, whether it's uh, a family reunion or not, we really need to go beyond the traditional framework that a sport car uh, entails, for example, or a family car entails. And there is going to be a lot more hybridization uh, in this context. Uh, no questions so far? So, what are good examples of uh, uh, blur? So, blur is very fertile in convergence of industry, especially in convergence of non-adjacent industries. Retail, it's one case. Uh, one big innovation platform in retail, it's actually mobile stores. So stores that move self-drive around the city. And at the bottom on the right, you see an example uh, of a store which is actually operating in Shanghai right now. And you connect as a consumer, you call the store, to come to you, you meet it outside. And of course, uh, this is a great example of blurrification. On the other end, uh, you have examples as well in the uh, travel and lodging arena, where a lot of uh, innovation has to do with the automotive part. And of course, the breakthrough here is having uh, you know, suits that uh, rather than being starting are the ones which are moving you from one side to the other of the country, from your meeting to the next. And they give you the ability, of course, these autonomous uh, rooms, uh, self-driving rooms, to uh, spend the time as best as you want in a more efficient way for you if you want to switch from relax to work and back, back and forth seamlessly. One of these concepts that we are looking at is actually having a hub for all this self-driving room uh, for people to meet uh, or to be in a pool uh, and relax, uh, to go to a gym and ever and have enjoy other traditional uh, leisure-related uh, uh, activities. The last example, it's an example from the restaurant industry. And of course, this is uh, uh, a convergence between automotive and in particular self-driving robots and the delivery systems uh, for restaurants. Uh, this example is here to show that not everything which is a convergence, it's actually an example of the blur. There is no blur here. We don't think so, because at the end of the day, this process existed. It's based on a specific uh, type of occasion, which is the ordering in. Uh, and it's just uh, a more automated, uh, uh, more technology intensive uh, uh, solution process, which is probably more efficient uh, by all means and purposes but it's not an example of the blur. So we have uh, uh, here more uh, um, you know, examples of how technology uh, can promote or not the blur. So this is the end of the presentation. Uh, do you have uh, any questions for me?